Okay, this is chemistry uh, chapter 14 notes. This chapter is about, it's called reaction kinetics, and it's about the speed in which a chemical reaction occurs. So just going through uh, the notes real quick, um, kinetic energy is energy in motion as opposed to potential energy. And this chapter is about how fast reactions occur. An example that I gave you in the notes is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, and that decomposes into water and oxygen gas. So that decomposition occurs very slowly if you store the hydrogen peroxide correctly, all right? You put it, have it in a bottle, and it's usually a dark colored bottle. So that's a super slow reaction that could take years uh, to occur. The, the hydrogen peroxide on, on your shelf at your house can be good for many years. So even if a reaction is spontaneous uh, like this one, there's no value in running it if it doesn't proceed quick, quickly enough. So the reaction rate equation, all right, So this is in your notes. There's a space for you to write this down. It's the change, remember a triangle, delta means change, in the concentration, bracket means concentration, of the products divided by the change in time. Now you don't need to memorize that, but that is a great way of giving a picture into what's happening here, okay? what the rate equation is. It's just how fast are products made? How much is the concentration of the products increasing per second? Okay, so, but we won't be using this uh, in, our, in our math in this chapter. Okay, the factors that affect reaction rate, just moving down the notes, uh, the first one is temperature. All right, so raising temperature increases reaction rate because molecules move faster. All right, when temperature is raised, there's more collisions. So more collisions. The second is concentration. So if I have more molecules per unit of area, Okay, more molecules, there's going to be more collisions. So, see, it's just all about the collisions. And then the third is surface area. If you increase the surface area, then you have the opportunity for more collisions. Okay, so with the surface area example, let's say we were to have... I don't know, let's say we were reacting a sugar cube. All right. So only the outside surface, only that outside surface is exposed at the beginning of the reaction. Okay, so all of the sugar in the center of the cube is not exposed so that it can't collide and react. But what if we were to pulverize that and so we just had a lot of sugar particles. Um, we were to smash that cube into bits, okay? Then a lot more of those molecules are exposed. So the greater the surface area, more collisions, the faster the reaction will go. All right, so we are at, on your own, 14.1 on page 464 in the book. I'll let you pause the video if you need to flip to that while I erase. Okay, 14.1 says two containers are filled with the same mass of both nitrogen and hydrogen gas. Is the first container, if the first container is significantly larger than the second, in which container will the reaction be fastest? Okay, so let's say we have a container of really big beaker. 
all right? And you've got some gas molecules there. Okay? And then we have the same number of gas molecules in a much smaller beaker. Not a beaker, but a container. Same number. All right, which one are you gonna have greater opportunity for collisions? It's gonna be the second, all right? So the answer is the second container. All right, that smaller volume is going to increase concentration. So that increases the reaction rate. Okay, 14.2. Uh, says the muscles in an animal's body are run by chemical reactions. When these reactions occur, they contract the muscle making it move. A biologist is studying a lizard, notices that when the lizard is in a cold place, it moves very slowly. But when it's in a warm place, it moves very quickly. Explain this observation in terms of chemical kinetics. So it's factor one, temperature, right? Increasing temperature increases the reaction rate. Okay, so that's all there is to it. All right, I'll give you a chance uh, to pause the video if you need. I'm going to erase this and we'll move on to the bottom of page one in your notes. All right, the math in this chapter is governed by the rate equation. Okay, and this is uh, all listed in your notes. R is equal to K times the concentration of reactant A to the X power times the concentration of reactant B to the y power. Okay, so R is the reaction rate, K is the rate constant, and the units will be different in every reaction on that. A, concentration of reactant A, B is concentration of reactant B. X, that exponent, is the order with respect to A, and Y is the order with respect to B. All right, and then the overall order, this one is important for your homework, You just add the exponents together, x plus y. All right, and the, the units for R going to be molars per second. All right, so how fast does the concentration of the products increase, okay? Molarity, a concentration unit per second. All right, and, and the last bullet on page one, in cases where the chemical reaction is unaffected by concentration, the exponent is zero. So if you have, if you go through the math and you have a reactant that's raised to the zero power, anything raised to the zero power is just one. So that doesn't change the rate, okay? It's like multiplying it by one, it doesn't affect it. All right, so uh, turn in your book there's a lot of example problems uh, in blue, but we're going to turn to page 472 and work through 14.3. Uh, so we're going to use this, uh, this rate equation, so I'll leave that up on the whiteboard there. So we have this reaction in 14.3. We've got H2. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put the phase um, in this case plus two and O 
phase phase uh, does matter in this chapter in some problems, but not in this one. It makes N2O plus H2O. All right, and we're really just, uh, we're going to worry about the reactants. So the products, we're not really looking at with these type of problems. And you've got a table of data, trial one, trial two, and trial three. And so look at that data table, and we're going to start from left to right. And it says the initial concentration of H2. We want to see what trials is H2 held constant. So this is a lab experiment, and this is data gathered in a lab experiment. H2 is held constant, trials 1 to 2. So let's write that down. Trial 1 to 2, the const concentration of H2 is held constant. Okay, what happens to the second reactant, NO? Well, in trials 1 to 2, it goes from 0.3 to 0.6. So the concentration of NO doubles. And that's going to happen every time because this is a lab experiment. And they are, because this is easy to do mathematically, they're doubling the concentration of one of the reactants just to see what happens. Now, what happens to the reaction rate? If you look at the table, it goes from 0.002835 to 0.01134. If you'll take the bigger number and divide it by the smaller number, you'll see that the reaction rate quadruples. If you want, you can pause the video and try that. Do it, take 0.01134 and divide it by 0.002835, and you'll see that it's, the answer is 4. So what this means is, okay, if something doubles, right, that's like a 2, right, when something doubles. When something quadruples, so this is the second reactant. NO is the second reactant. So we're going to raise it, that second reactant, to the Y power. When something quadruples, mathematically, that's like 4. Right? 2 to the y is equal to 4. So what is y equal? Well, 2 squared. So y is equal to 2. All right, we've got our first exponent. Now let's look at the second reactant, NO. We want to know where is NO held constant? Because we're going to hold NO constant now and double H2 and see what happens. Okay, so NO is held constant from trial 2 to 3. So let's write that down. Trial 2 to 3. The concentration of NO, our second reactant, is held constant. All right, what happens to our first reactant, H2? Well, you can see that it goes from 0.35 to 0.7 in trials 2 to 3. 0.35 to 0.7, so it doubles. And that is on purpose. That's going to happen every time. What happens to R? Okay, R goes from 2 to 3, 0.01134 up to 0 0.02268. If you take the bigger number in your calculator, divide it by the smaller number, you're going to get a 2. So it doubles. All right, so that is like saying 2, because doubles is 2. And this is the first reactant, okay, H2. All right, H2 doubles. H2 is the first reactant, so 2 to the x is equal to 2. Doubling means 2. So x is equal to 1. All right, so we have a preliminary rate equation. It doesn't have k, but we can use these exponents. We have r is equal to k all right, times the concentration of our first reactant, H2, and x exponent x is 1, times the concentration of the second reactant, NO, and its exponent is Y, which we figured out first, that's 2. 
All right, now we can do some math to figure out K. All right, so go ahead and pause if you need to. I'm going to erase this, and we'll start from this point to finish out the problem. So we have R is equal to K, H to the first, and conservation of NO to the second. And you don't have to write, you don't have to write the one there if you don't want to. The one is implied, but I wrote it the first time in order to, I'll go ahead and write it this first time just to make sure. Okay, now what we want to do is look at one of the trials. It doesn't matter which one as long as you're consistent, but I always like to start with trial one. Let's fill out the data from trial one. So we have R is equal to K, which we don't know. We're trying to figure it figure that out. The concentration of H2 is 0.35. Unit is molar. The concentration in trial 1 of NO is 0.3. That unit is molar and we have to square it. And that is equal to, all right, in fact um, our reaction rate, I can go ahead and, and even take that out, that part out. Sorry about that. Our reaction rate is equal to 0 0.002835. And that's going to be molars per second. Okay, so the units given in the table. We want to solve for K. So I'm going to take these two, bring it underneath that. So I've got 0.002 835 molars per second divided by 0.35 times 0 0.30 squared. Now be careful putting this into your calculator. If you need to, to multiply 0.35 times 0.3 squared and then write those two numbers out separately and then divide, that's fine, but uh, you should be able to do it all in one pop. So give that a try in your calculator and see if you get for K uh, 0 0.09. So if you don't get 0 0.09, that means you're entering it wrong. Okay, so that's the number, the unit is going to be molars per second, molars per seconds on top, and then on bottom when I multiply molars by molars squared, you add the exponents, so that's molars cubed. So that's the same as molars per second times one over molars cubed. That cancels, one of those cancels, so we've got one over seconds times molar squared. I usually write the molar squared first. So K is one over molar squared times second. Okay, so that is not the final answer. The final answer, we want the rate equation. So we're gonna use that. So our, our rate equation is 0.09 times 1 over molar squared times seconds times the concentration of our first reactant H2 to the first power, which you don't have to write that one if you don't want to, times the concentration of nitrogen monoxide to the second power. All right, so that is the rate equation for this reaction. Right, that'll give you the concentration of the rate of change of products. All right, 14.3. So there's a lot of work to these. Let's do a second one. Usually things get a little better as, as we go along and it becomes a little easier. So pause the video if you're still writing and uh, I'll go ahead and erase this. All right, let's go ahead up in the corner here, write our rate equation K, concentration of A to the X, concentration of the second reactant B to the Y. So we'll refer to that. 
Okay, we are at 14.4. So this is page 472 still. So we've got this reaction, NO2 plus O3 makes NO3 plus O2. Now we're not really worried about the products. We're gonna look at the reactants. So let's look at that table. And I wanna see in what trial is our first reactant held constant. And see, if you'll look at the table, it's trial one to three. And trial one to three, NO2 concentration is held constant. It's point zero 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 five zero on both of them. So let's see what happens to the concentration of our second reactant, O3. Do you guys remember what, uh, what the name of O3 is? I'll give you a second. Ozone. All right, ozone doubles. It goes from 0 0.00010 to 0 0.00020. That's on purpose. This is a lab experiment. It's easy to double something. All right, the rate between one and three goes from 0.044 to 0.044. So it stays the same. So mathematically, doubling is like putting a two, putting a two in the brackets. Now, O3, ozone, is the second reactant, so it is y, its exponent is y. So two to the y is equal to, well, in math, if, stump, if something stays the same, that's like a one. So what, what power, if you raise anything to it, will give you a one, it's zero. So y is equal to zero. What that's saying is that ozone, doesn't matter how you change the concentration of ozone, this reaction rate is not getting any faster. Ozone is not changing the speed. All right, let's look at, at the second column, all right, for the second reactant. Where is ozone held constant? All right, it's held constant between trials two and three. Okay, see how it's 0 0.000020 in both? O3 is constant. All right, uh, what happens to NO2? I don't even need to look, look at it. It's gonna double. But you can look at it between two and three and you can see it does double. What happens to the reaction rate between at trial two to three? Well, it goes from 0.022 to 0.044. I bet you don't even need your calculator to know that it doubles. So, so that's like saying two, and this is our first reactant, NO2 is the first reactant, so it gets the X exponent. Two to the X is equal to two, doubling is two. So X is equal to one, two to the first power is two. So we've got our intermediate rate equation, R is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 to the first power times the concentration of ozone to the zero power, which just means that's a one, anything to the zero. So our rate equation is K, concentration of NO2 to the first power. We don't even have to write the one for the power, okay? Much simpler rate equation than the last one. Let's look at trial one and enter the data we have, okay? So our reaction rate is 0.044 in trial one. We don't know K, that's what we're trying to figure out. And the concentration of NO2 in trial one is 0.000040 in And that's gonna be molars. Okay, solving for K. That's gonna be 0.044 molars per second over point zero 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 five zero molars. 
All right, give that a try in your calculator, but you should get 880. Say, Mr. Woodard, Mr. Woodard, Mr. Woodard, what's the unit? Well, it's molars per second divided by molars. So that's molars per second times one over molars. And that's one over seconds. So the unit for K is one over second. We're almost done. Our rate equation is gonna be R is equal to 880, one over second, times the concentration of NO2 to the first power. O3 is not part of it because it was to the zero power. And there you go. So look at that one. Anytime you have something to the zero power, you should be happy because it's gonna make your, your entire process just a little easier. All right, I'm gonna do two more on your own. If you look at the next page in the book, page 473, these are gonna go much, much faster. All right, pause the video if you need to. All right. Okay, let's look at 14.5. It says the following reaction. We have 2PO plus Br2 makes 2PO Br. It's determined to be second order with respect to PO and first order with respect to Br. What is the rate equation? Okay, we don't, it didn't, they didn't give us any numbers, so no problem. We're just going to put R is equal to K. We're not going to have to solve for K, all right, because they didn't, didn't give us any numbers. And then we have the concentration of the first reactant, and it says it's second order with respect to PO. That means second order means it has an exponent of 2. And it's first order with respect to bromine. You don't have to put that one there, okay? You can if you want. I don't care. You don't have to. All right, so what is the overall order? That's the rate equation right there, R. What's the overall order? Well, it's x plus y. So that's going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. Oh my gosh, don't miss that on the test. 14.6. All right, we have C7H15Cl plus NAF. Sodium fluoride makes C7H15F plus NaCl. So you have a double replacement reaction here. All right, you learn more about that in chapter 16. Okay, so uh, the numbers are, it's determined to be first order with respect to C7H15Cl and zero order with respect to sodium fluoride. What's the rate equation and the overall order? Okay, well, the rate equation is going to be K. It says it is first order with respect to C7H15Cl. So that exponent is 1. And then it's zero order. And you wouldn't have to write this down, but 0, 1. So that means this whole thing just goes away. That's a, that whole thing, anything to the zero power is one. So when you it doesn't change the rate equation. So our rate equation for this is going to be K times C7H15Cl. I'm not going to put the one there. You don't have to. And then the overall order is X plus Y. Add the two exponents. So... That's going to be 1 plus 0, which is 1. All right, that, that concludes Lecture 1 for Chemistry Chapter 14. 
We'll pick up from there on lecture two.